Hi everybody, Allison Bowman here. I'm the Administrative Assistant for the Arts Council of Johnson County. I'm super excited for the 2021 Shooting Stars season and congratulations again for being finalists. Today, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about Photoshop. Um, so when, if you're in 2D, 3D art or photography, um, Photoshop's a really great tool to help you make your images the best they can be for your digital portfolio. Um, so a little bit about Photoshop is it's a great program. You can do a whole lot of stuff in it. Um, I use it for my own personal art practice. Um, I just use it to edit my photos and they come out really nice and I send them into galleries. I use it from our website, um, all that great stuff. So about Photoshop is they offer a 14 day free trial. Um, you do have to enter a credit or debit card number, but if you cancel it before the 14 days are up, then you will have to pay for it. So that's an easy kind of cheap way to get through Photoshop. Um, if you do want to purchase a subscription, it is $9.99 a month just for Photoshop. And then Adobe Suite has a lot of different options. Um, so if you were into like illustration or graphic design, um, there's InDesign, there's Illustrator, all those great programs that come in the Adobe Suite. So anyway, um, Today, I'm just gonna show you Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how to edit your photos. So here is one of my paintings um, that I have already uploaded here into Photoshop. And the first thing before you even open Photoshop, you just wanna make sure that you have a really good photo of your work. It doesn't have to be super straight. It doesn't have to be amazing, like, it doesn't have to be amazing lighting. Just make sure there's no harsh shadows or harsh glares and make sure you try to line up the corners as best you can, um, especially for 2D pieces that are, you know, square or rectangle. Um, for your 3D pieces, you want to try to take photos from different angles. Um, so for the 3D digital portfolio, it does ask you to, to insert um, two images per piece. Um, from one, one from one angle and one from another, just so judges can see the full piece in the round. Um, after you take your photo, which can be on your phone, um, usually phones have a pretty good uh, resolution already built into their cameras. Um, so you take a picture with your phone, but don't crop it, don't edit it, just make it, you know, don't do anything to it. So you, that photo that you just took, you're going to upload into Photoshop. Mine is already edited, but I'm going to still show you how to do yours. So um, when you get your photo uploaded, like mine, you want to make sure that you are on the layers page. So layers are gonna show you um, just all the things that you have done to your uh, image, like brightness, contrast, cropping, it's all gonna come out in layers. So you wanna go over here and you want to make sure that this lock button is off. You don't want to see a lock there because that won't let you use certain tools. So now there's this dotted line around my image and we're ready to go. So first thing is you want to make sure that your piece is straight and straight on and flat, not 3D pieces. 3D, don't worry about this part. But 2D and photography for your pieces, you're going to come over here to edit. You are going to go down to perspective warp. So perspective warp is going to take your image, if it's slightly off, like a little bit, it'll fix it for you and make it look really nice. So perspective warp, and this is gonna show me how to do it. So you are going to drag from one corner to the other, but you are gonna make sure that you're going from all four corners of your image piece. So take out the background, you know, don't worry about the background, just go from the four corners of your artwork. And then you come up here and you click warp and you do this little hashtag number sign look in thing. So you click that. It's not going to do anything because I've already done mine, but it's going to make yours straighten out. So now it's flat and then you push the check mark and there you have it. And then after you do that, you want to make sure you crop it. So now that your image is flat, you have nice 90 degree angle corners you can click this crop tool over here and drag your corners to line up with the four corners of your piece. So that's uh, how you crop. And then you, you always wanna hit the check mark or hit enter 
um, to save the thing that you just did. So once you've cropped your piece, it should look like this. So it's nice and flat, 90 degree corners, nothing looks warped or weird, um, and it's all cropped so there's no background. Even if your piece is framed, um, take out the frame. Don't crop the, or don't keep the frame in the painting, crop it out, um, just because judges are gonna wanna see the piece itself. So we have our layers over here, like I said earlier. So you're gonna make sure that first layer is clicked. And you're gonna come up here to your adjustments. And this is where you change the brightness and contrast, the levels, white balance, all of that um, crazy stuff. A lot of it I don't use. Um, pretty much the only two things I use are brightness and contrast or levels, which kind of do the same thing, but I'll show you. So we'll start with levels. So it comes up and it makes this weird like graph looking thing. So this one over here, if you pull it in, it's gonna make your image darker. And then this one over here, it's gonna make your image lighter, okay? And then this one in the middle, it's gonna go the opposite way. What you wanna do generally across the board is you want this middle triangle here to be right where the curve of the graph starts to go up and get bigger, where there's more, you know, it's going up like this. That means there's more activity over here. So you don't want it over here or else it's gonna be way too light and you don't want it over here because it's gonna be way too dark. So right in the middle here, and sometimes it's not the middle, sometimes your arch starts over here. You just have to put it, you know, where you think it looks best. So next I will show you brightness and contrast. These are super self-explanatory. Brightness makes the brightness go up and down. And really what brightness is changing is the white in your photo. So all of the white, white spots, lighter spots, if you go this way, they're gonna get lighter, and if you go this way, they're gonna get darker. So I already did mine, so it's pretty much gonna stay in the middle, but I think I'm gonna make my contrast a little bit deeper. So it gets some of those rich, um, dark kind of blue areas, and then it contrasts really well with these light areas. So use the brightness and contrast however you feel like um, is gonna work the best for you. So when you have finished um, editing your photo and it's where you want it, it looks good, you wanna come over here to image and click on image size. And this is going to tell you how big your photo is. If I were to print this photo out right now, it's gonna come out four by four inches-ish. And the resolution is 72. So a little bit about this if you don't know. Um, Usually it's best to change your inches to pixels because um, a lot of times when you're entering artwork into competitions, jury shows, um, submitting a portfolio, they're going to ask you to do a specific image size in pixels and not in inches. So you can see that mine is almost perfectly square. It's 299 pixels by 300 pixels, which is super small. So this picture, this image is actually a thumbnail that I use on my website. So it's a super small image. You guys are going to be entering images that are like 90 to 120 DPI, which DPI means dots per inch and PPI means pixels per inch. So Photoshop uses pixels per inch, which is PPI. And that just tells you, um, length by width, how many pixels there are in your photo per inch. So right now there are 72 pixels per inch. So that's pretty low. Printing, if you're, if you're going to be printing something, you typically want 300 pixels per inch because if you print something that's 72 PPI, it's gonna be super blurry. But 72 PPI is really great for digital work. So like websites or sending in um, test images. The way my image is right now, I cannot make this PPI bigger than what it is because the image doesn't have those pixels. So if I make it 90, it's gonna be really blurry and funky. I mean, if you zoom in here, it's super blurry because the computer is trying to um, fill in pixels where 
it doesn't really have memory of those pixels. So you want to make sure you take a photo and have the, usually the resolution, the PPI is going to be like 150, 300, something like that, which is great for your portfolio submission. So when you get your image, you're going to change your resolution. If it's higher than 120, I would just put it at 120. If it's 90, leave it at 90. If it's somewhere in between, that's great. If it's lower than 90, try to take a new picture and make sure that your resolution is high enough. So if it's not working on your phone, maybe see if you can get a camera, like a DSLR camera. Um, but your phone should probably be fine. The Shooting Stars portfolio doesn't require a certain pixel count, um, just the resolution matters and the size of your image. So um, for 2D, 3D, and photography, your image size, your max image size is eight megabits. So this image is way smaller than eight megabits. Um, probably too small, way too small for what you guys are wanting. So when you get your picture, you got it all edited, you change your resolution, either 90, 120, or somewhere in between, and you hit OK. So the next thing I want to share with you is a little bit about saving your work. Um, when you're ready to save your piece, you're all finished, make sure that you have saved that original image without any editing as its own separate image because you want to be able to come back to it in the future and maybe re-edit it, retouch it up. Because if you have a larger image size and you edit it down and you crop it and you change the image and the resolution and save it, and override that initial image, you're not gonna be able to go back and make that image bigger. So if I make this, if this image is the thumbnail that's at 72 PPI and someone comes to me and says, hey, I wanna put this in my magazine, I'm not gonna have that original image to be able to give them a higher resolution. So it's super important that you save your original image. Um, and then when you come over here to file, and save as, you don't wanna save because it's gonna write over that first image. So you save as, and it's gonna ask you this, and I just like saving it on my computer. You can save it on the cloud if that's what you want. It's up to you. So it shows up as a Photoshop file, which is just what the type of file is that you're making here in Photoshop. Um, so I like to save one that is a Photoshop file or is a TIFF file. TIFF, I'm not sure what TIFF stands for, but um, it's basically the same thing where you can just bring it in. It's that high resolution, um, you put it in Photoshop, and then you can continue with your work. If you save it as a JPEG, it's gonna be a one layer image and you're not gonna be able to edit it very well. The file sizes that you can upload to your portfolio are listed in your guidelines, so make sure you look at that before you send in your submission form. Um, but you can save your image as a JPEG. And I believe in the submission form or in the guidelines, it says um, that it wants your last name, first name, and the title of the piece. So this piece is called Ether. Um, and then you just save it. And then it's gonna ask you, these questions, um, just hit OK. Those don't really matter for what we're doing. So that is Photoshop in a nutshell. And if you guys have any questions, just reach out to ArchJoko at archjoko.org and we would be happy to answer any questions that you have.